Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks with Ingeni Titan, and yes, I've eventually bought the Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträger. Stock played it mostly, um, I think the, one of the games is definitely stock, I think the first game might actually be, um, with the upgrade, the first package with the actual engine upgrade, and the, um, this one here in Lakeville, but the one on Prokhorovka is with the original, um, package and it's kind of a good news bad news tank if well you've been already playing the Nash Hearn and the Stuart Emil and the Stuart Emil is slow and it's very limited gun arc and it's not very stealthy or it loses the stealth a lot because you have to move the whole tank and it's quite a large tank this thing is much more stealthier, but it is slow. It's not quite as slow. Stock, it's marginally better, it's in the Stuart Mill, but uh, probably worse going uphill. But it's um, a bit better after you get the upgrade. Uh, really adds to the power of the engine. And you get a much, much better tank. However, it's still slow by anybody's um, reckoning. And it's one thing that I have noticed over the years of watching people at the end of games when you'd move on to other players and you'd see somebody in a Borsig and they'd be inclined to reverse into their firing positions. Um, but you'd see it in games where people are playing in a Borsig and they reverse into their firing positions. Well, you do not want to be reversing out of a firing position as compromised. Um, it's that bad. So generally you can reverse into a firing position undetected, you're hidden, you, they don't know where you are. The gun has a very big boom, you look at the, um, the firing, um, what do you call it? The extension of the gun with firing when you fire, and I have muffled shot on this crew. Um, it, it gives away a lot of positions. So, you do want to be able to move back into cover uh, when you fire. You've got to be aware of the fact that if they're anywhere close at all, as in probably less than 300 meters, there's a chance they'll spot you with the gun when the gun fires. Um, so that is one of the problems. The tank is slow. Um, the other thing is it's got very poor gun depression because it's a very low profile tank. View range actually isn't bad considering that it's a low profile tank um, it's not terrible but you won't be self spotting in the way that you'd be self spotting in a Hellcat or a even the other uh, even the slower American uh, to take the stories like the, the T25-2 the um, Jackson or the Wolverine or the British Achilles they all have reasonable spotting ranges. Even the Challenger has a reasonable spotting range. Um, it's not a very stealthy tank, but it has a reasonable spotting range. And if you have a good crew, good stealth crew on a Challenger, you can safely pop away um, with the enemy not being too far away. If you're set up camouflage net, binoculars, whatever, and you're in reasonable cover, and you can pop away without any much chance of being discovered. Whereas this thing. Once you start getting close, there's a decent chance that you'll get discovered. And you, but once you're not shooting, you won't be spotted. Um, that's the thing. So you can move back into the firing position willy nilly, or at least as often as you want, unless they start uh, putting rounds through your cover deliberately and keep at it. But in case you'll just have to wait and they stop putting rounds through your cover. The other problem because it's slow is that if you misread a battle, especially if your team are doing really well and they're kind of ruffle stomping the enemy, you could have trouble catching up uh, or uh, relocating to a better location. Also because the tank is slow, if you feel that this position is untenable and you need to relocate, relocate. Relocate straight away. Don't hesitate any longer. Preferably do it yesterday. Um, other tanks you can think about it but not with this because if you're caught in the move you won't get anywhere in a hurry you won't get out of sight in a hurry um, if you're too close you would say or if you leave it too late turtle rotation is abysmal um, this thing will spin on the tracks using the track traverse 
faster than the horizontal stabilization keep up. So you can do a 180 on this and your turret will be pointing backwards trying to track back to its uh, camera location. Um, I suspect that players who get really good at brawling in this thing just lock the um, gun into position and actually rotate the um, the entire chassis to get the gun to bear and then just use the turret rotation for the final lay on of the gun. Um, and they learned how to do that and learned how to cope with that, uh, which is amazing and I don't think I'd be able to manage it. I mean, I've seen people brawl with this tank. I have brawled with people in this tank in light and medium tanks and had a challenging time doing it. So the people who can do it can do it. Uh, it can be done. I just don't think I'd be the one to do it. But and if you get a hit from this gun, you'll sit up and pay attention because it does for 490 average damage and it pretty much does it. Um, I have been doing, I think in my recent vehicle stats, over 1100 damage on average. Um, I've probably less than 30 games, maybe less than 40 games definitely, which means I barely know the tank. The flip side though is that when you do get to know the tank, when you get to, to, to know the ins and outs and what you can and cannot do with this tank, when you have good games, you'll have great games because it only takes three penetrating hits with the 12.8 centimeter gun to get fire perfect. The tank only has 1,100 hit points. It has no armor to speak of. That said, I have bounced shots off the ass of this thing uh, when I was scurrying to cover. But for practical purposes, um, the armor is non-existent. The gun shield is definitely, I think it's like 10 millimeters, maybe 20 millimeters. I don't know if you would even stop small arms fire. Um, I think I've met people who could put their fists through 20 millimeters of steel. But, and however, the um, the gun is pretty good. Um, now I've had, I wouldn't snapshot on it. Um, it. I think it tends to point to places that, um, like above the armor skirts, the horizontal bit that sticks out over the top of the, the armor tracks in a tank. I've had a lot of bounces with that sort of stuff, so it can, you can bounce, but that's it, it's, it's not a bad round, and it penetrates more often than not. And I have rarely had to switch to uh, armor piercing, the premium rounds, the APCR. With this tank, now, generally when I've had to switch, it's with, um, you're up against what, tier 9s and tier 10s, and sometimes with them, even with the um, premium rounds, you just won't go through the front of some of those tanks. But the but if it goes through, it'll go through. And if you can hit any kind of a flat surface, you have a good chance of the stuff going through. I cannot speak for the tank with the 15 centimeter gun because I just haven't unlocked that yet. Um, about a sixth of the way there. But with the 12.8 centimeter gun, it is. Um, it's a very reliable tank, very good performer. Um, it is stealthy enough if you can stay back. View range, like I said, it'll do if you have to, but it's not a tank that you would expect or rely on self-spotting. Uh, it may have been different when I joined up first, because I know a lot of tank destroyers have much better view ranges than they do now. Gun, hang gun handling is actually pretty decent. Um, does lack gun depression, does lack gun elevation, that's the one thing, and the turret traverses the other problem. But you can one shot with like, like tracks, stuff like that, so tracking shots are probably worth, if anyone's coming near you, it's probably the best thing to do is to try and track them. Um, and just hold them in position while you find some to cover or scurry away or just shoot them where they are. Keep them tracked if you can and just uh, finish them off where they are. But this game here will show the thing about this tank that uh, is what's, I think will make it um, give it a place to go in my heart is that when you have a good game, you tend to have a really good game. Um, you can have good games on other tank destroyers, like my pr principal experience would be with the. Um, 
the American and British tank destroyers, but they have rapid firing, good penetration guns. You could have good games with the Russian tank destroyers, but they had very high alpha and they're very trollish guns. They may or may not choose to hit the target you're aiming at. And you don't get a lot of shots off because they're very long um, reloads. The 12.8 has a decent reload. Now I don't know about the the 150, but the thing is the 150's alpha is huge. You're talking about um, 750, I think, average damage, which is well, it's up there with the I suppose the ICU 152, but this has got a better round. Um, it's with better ammunition more reliable ammunition that will penetrate more often and a more reliable performing gun. Now I don't know about the 150 but this gun is a more reliable performing gun than anything on a Russian um, tank destroyer that I've come across at least of the SU line um, tank destroyers. I haven't tried the other the, the SU-100, SU-152, ISU 152 of that line of tanks. I haven't tried the other line with the fast firing uh, guns but this has advantages over those. It's a turreted tank destroyer with a very effective gun. And when it has the final gun, it will have be a turreted tank destroyer with a very powerful uh, gun. And um, probably still got better gun handling. But it has got, statistically, it's got better gun handling than anything else, say, that the Russians would have. Uh, but it does comparable amounts of damage. So, like I said, on the day when you have a good game, you'll have. Uh, you could potentially have awesome games and you can do um, serious amounts of damage the this game I think I finish up with over 4k damage um, in a sort of 11 penetrating shots you will undoubtedly have games that are going to be better than this where you get 12 13 16 penetrating shots so damaging games with 7 or 8k damage, 10k damage is not out of bounds I think for uh, even for average players with this particular tank destroyer. Um, and I think that's probably a, um, a factor in its popularity or it certainly was a factor in its popularity, it doesn't seem to be as popular. Or at least I don't meet as many of them as I used to, but there was a time when um, these things were all over the place. Um, I suppose people are grinding out different lines. A lot of people have ground out their Germans a long time ago and they have the tier 10s and they probably don't play the tier 8s or the, the lower tiers. But you see the Waffentrager Panzer IV out often enough. Um, more so than the Borsig, I think. Well, yes, it's um, it's definitely a bit of an eye opener to play. It's, it's a different style to anything I've played before. Um, I think you need to be a bit cautious in it, not very aggressive, and you need to be yeah conservative, like conserve your hit points, conserve, uh, keep an eye on your location, keep an eye on what's going on around you, um, and relocate. If you think it's necessary, I mean, don't hesitate to relocate, I think, with this tank. Um, you can see there I'm pointing a bit high um, on the tank, and I decided to push forward a small bit. And then get the gun lower because I needed to change the terrain. Now the shot, the round fell short, short. anyway, it fell below what I, um, where the pip was, and fell below by a good, um, portion. That can happen when it's your ship blind firing. Your um, dispersion seems to get a lot worse when you don't have a real target at the end of the pit. So we're going down and the other thing here is the, um, now I think the trees may have been between me and the T29 but I stop here, or I stopped earlier on, and let the binoculars activate and I still didn't see the T29 in it moving. Um, which is reinforces the comment I'm making about the view range of this thing. It's um, it's okay. It's not a problem, but it's not a tank where you're going to be um, 
exploiting view range advantage to a huge extent. So far, I think actually the line is fun. Um, the low tier versions are really good. It lags a bit in the middle. Um, I actually think the um, what the tier five, the tier six, the Nashorn and the Panzer, whatever it is, SFL, uh, are the worst because I don't know. Uh, they seem to be the worst. The Nashorn isn't that terrible when you get the top gun, but the lower guns, it's, it's very poor. Uh, they again, it's affected by mobility and stuff like that as well. The Sture Mill with the top gun actually isn't too bad as long as you just stay back, stay behind hills. Um, again, you may not have exciting games in it, and I don't think you'll carry your team or you won't have necessarily a high win rate. But you'll do your fire for effect generally reasonably reliably in it. And I suppose good players will have uh, carry their team and have a positive win rate with it and all that sort of stuff. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please give it a like and share. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to the channel, I'll catch you all again soon, bye for now.